get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a peach If you find the same And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs like the founders of RX Bar, Quest Nutrition, Einstein Bagels, and many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Our sponsor today is Rise25.com, which I co-founded with my business partner, John Corcoran. Rise25 hosts in-person VIP events and masterminds for top entrepreneurs all over the country, including many events in the e-commerce industry. We hosted events this past year in Austin, Chicago, Santa Barbara, San Diego, New York, Vegas, others I'm probably missing. If you see value of immersing yourself with other top entrepreneurs to connect and collaborate to get your business to the next level, go to rise25.com, contact us to find out when and where our next event is going to be. I'm very excited. Today we have Dan Kurzrock, who's co-founder of Regrained. Regrained leverages technology and culinary science to transform beer waste into food and they call this edible upcycling you know dan i was surprised when i was doing research to learn that only about 10 percent of the ingredients used to brew beer end up in your glass that's crazy and um, we'll talk about what you do with the rest of it and regrain takes the spent grain waste from local brewery partners and they build recipes around it with other locally sourced ingredients to craft delicious healthy and inherently sustainable foods i can speak from experience because i have bought a box of regrained. If you can, if you're watching the video, you can see this. And I've already eaten half of these. And this is the honey cinnamon IPA. Love it. Thanks, Dan. All right. What uh-huh. was the first iteration of? Okay, you contact the brewery, and you're like, we're gonna yeah. come pick up this stuff, and then yeah, talk about what it looks like now. But talk about yeah, early for, on what that looks like. Except for our truck, it was a Subaru. A Subaru. Okay. <laughs> <Gotcha>. <laughs> Um, so talk, walk me through the first time you contacted. Yeah. Brewery. Well, so what happened was we had this transition where we, we were initially just use, making beer and using our own grain. Right? right. And then our vision was to become a solution for the breweries. Right. Uh, but it was hard for us to fathom ever needing more grain than we would generate from a single day of making beer. It's about a pound of grain per six pack of beer. Uh, and so we'd have, you know, these big buckets from just making our own beer. But it got to the point where we were doing these, these farm workers markets and there's a few times where we realized, okay, we kind of have to make beer in order to have the grain and that's kind of silly. So let's... Uh, well, let's well also, you're in a frat house. You could do it. Not at, not, well, not at the time. We were at our... Like, oh, gotcha. Jordan's parents' kitchen. And, and so we called around, made some cold calls to breweries. I'm very comfortable just doing that. Um, that's kind of what I, was, what I was doing for work at the time anyways. And... We got in touch with the breweries, told them who we were, what we were doing, and um, you know, a brewery uh, said, "Sure, come on down. You're welcome to were have it." Were there any have objections? Were they like, "Oh, we are to give it to this for X, Y, Z," or was it pretty seamless? No, it was pretty seamless. I mean, there's so the historical paradigm for how this this grain is handled is that it's it's uh, been used for for animal feed. Yeah. Uh, and, but the amount of grain that we were going to be taking initially was, was so low that it wasn't going to be disruptive to any existing relationships. And actually what we learned was that urban breweries, it's a cost center for them uh, because farmers uh, are, are less willing to come into the city to get mm. the grain. So um, typically, they, if it's more in a, like a rural area, the farmers may pay for this like at a low cost to feed their animals. But they're not mm-hmm. going to travel that far distances to do yeah, so. Yeah, I mean, if you're a farmer, you know, are you going to drive your... You know, big truck across, you know, in bridge, Chicago, you know, no. deal with yeah. you know, uh, deal with traffic, deal with you know everything. So I- exactly. So these urban breweries have a bit of a different ecosystem that um, you know we can play a really uh, we hope you know to play a really significant role in. But this first brewery was super open to us doing it. We came on by, but we learned a very important lesson because we showed up and all the grain was just in a dumpster uh, behind the the brewery, you know, which wasn't which is not food safe. <laughs> course (laughs) it's a food safe dumpster yeah no not so so much so so it occurred to us that um in working with these breweries we needed to be have a have a pretty deep partnership with them where they where we can create food food safe you know gold standard processes and um another kind of funny story with picking up grain that was another food safety lesson was we uh, were working with a brewery and they were making a stout which is an oyster stout um turns out that the way this particular brewery does it is they actually 
run the beer through a bunch of oysters and then back through the grain. And so there was like oyster remnants, you know, shellfish in the, in the grain. And they were like, Oh, we can't take that. So then, you know, that helped us realize, okay, we got to also not only food safety in terms of like the process of, of collecting, you know, we call it the harvest, you know, harvesting the grain and turning it into regrained. Um, but also knowing what their supply, you know, I guess their supply chain and what yeah. they're, with it's probably a pain it. for them, I imagine, if they're used to just throwing it in a dumpster or something. Now they want you want them to the thing kind is, of package it. Right? I mean, the thing is, is that we're taking something for these breweries that has historically been um, basically cost and risk. Um, you know, even the ones that are making, you know, generating some revenue off of it, it's, it's pretty pretty marginal, and we're turning it into something that's all that's all upshot. And brewers inherently, beer is a lot of people forget beer is an agricultural product. And brewers are very connected, and by and large, to to the land and to um, being stewards of of our planet. Um, and so, you know, from on a like philosophical level, there's there's a lot of enthusiasm for this for what we're doing. It's been kind of an open secret in the industry for a long time that this is uh, a pretty overlooked resource. And they're you know they're they're pretty ex- they're excited to see us come in and and propose propose a new a new solution and we're making a very just to be perfectly candid we're making a very small dent on the total volume oh, yeah. of, I think of potential food in that's the up. research i don't remember if it was someone one of the brewers that you worked with or there was some quote i don't know if it was thirty thousand pounds a week per brewery or something like of this grain is that yeah, about so accurate that, that, that's like a medium-sized brewery yeah that's a lot that's a lot yeah you know, that's that's absolutely a lot one and with brewery our, one and, week yeah. yeah, and with our and with our bars, uh, you know, where there's only so much grain that we can divert with that, which is why we're so excited about what we're doing with our flour and some of the development that we're doing with other other food companies around incorporating our signature ingredient into their into their recipes, um, because there is still a massive you know loop to be to be closed, and you know we we aim to do that through this technology that we've created and patented with the USDA and also through the brand that we're building and kind of the goodwill with the marketplace that we're doing where we're redefining something that used to be known as, as you know, the artist formerly known as spent grain is now regrained super grain that um, is, you know, high protein, high fiber, makes an impact uh, on saving the planet. So, so uh, the first iteration is you take your Subaru and <laughs> yeah. you pick it up. What was it contained in at the time? Uh, just like food safe tubs, basically, tubs. You know, big big containers that you know. You, if you like go to the back of a restaurant, you see like big plastic containers um, that are uh, you know rated for you know food yeah. food handling, and then there's bigger and bigger versions of that. And now, what what? How is it picked up? Now we have trucks. Yeah, so it's, I mean, uh, are the trucks loaded. Just they're separate. Uh, do you contract a company, or do you actually have people in the staffing who actually helps with the logistics of, of picking this stuff up? Yeah, right now it's it's overseen by our by our operations manager. We handle it. so that this is something that we can't. It's so important uh, to do it correctly. We can't outsource the. We can outsource the production of the bars. We're actually going to be doing that pretty soon. And when we make other products, we won't be the ones actually making the ready to eat product. Uh, but the creation that is that is the core of our. Of, of, of what we do and also our intellectual property is how you um, how you do this the process so, yeah for sure yeah. how you get it from the the brewery to is that yeah. is that patentable or yeah it, we it actually we, yeah yeah the, the the process of not not how you get it you know pick up pick it up or whatever but how you how you process it is yeah very valuable that's too bad I missed out on this. Uh, yeah, I should have invested. Actually, damn. So did Tom? <laughs> did, did you pitch Tom on investing in this? Uh, no, it already it already had closed. What's that? No, I mean <laughs> after. Like, if someone like him, people are already knowing this space. Um, no, if that's if that's a conversation that he or anyone else is listening wants to have with oh, us, gotcha. we're always we're always looking for um, strategic strategic money. You know, kind of money plus. Yeah. Uh, not all not all money is uh, is fungible. This is. Uh, Dan, this is awesome what you guys are doing. And then I'm surprised the domain regrained.com was available. Was that oh, we made up, was well, that? We, made up, we made up the word. That's the best way to make sure the domain's available. It was like 10 it's, bucks. It's still like, I can't believe it was available. Yeah, I can't believe someone else didn't come up with this business <laughs> before we did. So, 
<laughs> so what's next? You know, um, people for one, thanks, Dan, I appreciate it. And I, I always ask two questions on Sparta Insider and people should really, this is, you know, if you haven't gotten in early at this point, it's, it's going to be huge. Uh, regrain.com check it out support them by buying bars or whatever else they're doing because they're yeah they're they taste good and they're doing good and um, I always ask um, what's been the lowest point and then what's been the proudest moment what's been uh, wow. I mean I'm sure there's a lot of challenges with this well, have you ever seen that there's this chart that's like a day in the life of an entrepreneur where it's, you know, it kind of oscillate between those things every day where it's like, oh my God, this is like the best thing ever. I totally know what I'm doing. And it's like, what the heck am I doing? I have no idea. I've never done this before. I don't know anything. And you kind of like oscillate between those two extremes throughout a day. Um, you know, the lowest point, we haven't had a lot of just super low points. There's been some micro ones where we've had, for example, like back when Jordan and I were still in the kitchen, there's been days where we like would ruin a batch or something like that. And it was, it felt so devastating at the time because it had implications. We really needed that inventory in order to fulfill our orders, in order to keep our customers happy and continue to grow. And, um, you know, you kind of can, if you're not careful, uh, and, and, and stopping these, you know, these, these cycles, you know, these downward spirals of like, this means this, which means that, which means this could happen. Uh, you know, that can get that can get really bad. Um, I would say one of the proudest moments that we've both had recently. We actually just came back from this big trade show. It's called Natural Products Expo West. It's out in Anaheim every year. It's kind of like a who's who in the natural food and also just natural products space. Um, we had our you know we had a booth there, and it, it occurred to me and Jordan one time when we were you know walking the floor that while we were away from our booth but not worried at all and actually kind of relieved because some of the people there knew how to be in the booth and engage the, the, the traffic and the buyers, you know, better, better than we can. And that we had this, this incredible team that, um, we just trust implicitly to represent us to the fullest and that we could kind of just like let re regrand is bigger than ourselves. It was kind of this moment where we, we realized regrand is bigger than ourselves, mm. uh, which is really important because, you know, we see, Regrained as this extension of ourselves and an ability to make an outsized impact on, on the planet, and to have to be able to grow an organization that can, um, you know, a team that can that can do that, you know, with us and also without us, um, you know, in some cases was, I guess, just a really um, you know, reassuring and, and powerful you know moment for us to have as founders that was, um, yeah, very clear. Yeah. It's going to grow beyond you. Um, what good came out of Expo West for you? Well, uh, this how is do you the, decide to do a booth as opposed to just going and walking the show? What what made you just make the decision to get a booth? Yeah, so this year um, is the year that we're actually trying to grow in the marketplace and get our get our products out there. You know, we learned last year we we were at Expo West, but we were really just learning. Uh, we're pretty wide eyed. It's a pretty overwhelming experience. Um, so this year we were set up in the the two major distributors. We know how to how to talk about our product to who, you know, we have our pricing all figured out, our distribution figured out. Um, and so we were really looking to, to close business. Um, and it's also just always good to, for me as my, my personal goal there is also just to meet, uh, the other leaders in the industry, especially those that are focused on using their business as a force for, as a force for good. Um, but it was a very sales sales focus, uh, this year, which is yeah. great because that's what we need to do right now. Dan, I want to be the first one to thank you. Everyone check out regrained.com. Any other places we should point people? Where can people get the product? They can go on Amazon, Regrained, yeah, anywhere Amazon, else. Amazon, Regrained. There's a few other places on the internet where our distribution to actual stores is pretty focused in California at this point, mm -hmm. but that's um, that's changing pretty quickly. Um, but it's always always great to get uh, get orders on our on our website, and we can have that relationship with, uh, with you. And we'd love to hear from you, even if you just want to write us and let us know what you think of what we're doing or ask any questions. You know, we're very, uh, you know, engaged in the, in the digital, digital community. So thanks cool. for, thanks for taking the time right. to hear me ramble about things. Thanks for, thanks Dan. Thanks for thanks. Everyone check out readgrain.com And at that, I'm probably going to bite into this. So I don't have to talk <laughs> anymore. So appreciate it. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. We'll talk soon. What I've got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire.